Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dion and today we are doing a video basically revamping your closet, rethinking your closet and DIYs to basically get new clothes from your closet without actually having to go buy things. These are the DIYs that are free to very, very cheap and very beginner friendly. It's spring break season. It's spring season. We're getting into spring summer and I'm sure there's like a lot of like videos out there about hauls and getting new clothes for the spring and summertime. And I wanted to do a video about things that you can do to the clothes that you already have to make them a little bit more inspirational for spring and summer if you're just getting tired of your clothes. So I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this video. It's a little bit different, but I'm gonna be showing you guys stuff that I've done for my own closet that are very, very easy and definitely you will be capable of doing them. I can assure you not a single art teacher in my entire life has ever called me artistic. My older brother was artistic and they'd be like, you're, you're Garmin's sister? Really? I promise you, you will be able to do these DIYs and hopefully you will get something out of this video. Hopefully you will learn that hot girls rewear their clothes. Hot girls don't buy things for spring and summer. So if you like fashion videos and fashion commentary in general, definitely make sure to subscribe to this channel because I post videos every Thursday with that. Let's get into it. How do I feel about side braids? I kind of feel like I look like Fiona from Shrek, but I also don't know if that's a bad thing. So here we are. All right, so the first category of hot girl DIYs, what that's, I guess, what I'm calling it, whatever, hot person DIYs are gonna be clothing hacks. So these are things that you don't need anything extra. You just need the clothes that you already own and ways to transform them. So this could be things as skirts, as dresses, dresses as tops. If you used to watch Ashley Best Dressed, she was the queen of like stuffing dresses inside of pants. But if you have a maxi skirt, there is nothing easier than just pulling it up and belting it and like creating a brand new dress or using that maxi skirt as a petticoat or something. I also recently saw this hack of doing a button down skirt, which I think looks really cool. I still want to workshop like how to style it exactly, but I think it's a very cool concept and something that I'm definitely Definitely gonna do more in the spring and summer. Another thing is like if you have a dress that you like but maybe it's too small or maybe it's just not your style anymore but you do like the pattern, you like the neckline, you can use the neckline of the dress as a base and build an outfit around that by layering other pieces. This is a great way to make like a gown basically if you are a normal person and don't own a lot of gowns. Layering a lot of pieces together and cinching them and belting them can make it seem like you are wearing a, a beautiful ornate gown. I also love wearing button downs as off the shoulder tops. Some pin, you don't even need like pins for this. You can just sort of button it in a way that will leave it off the shoulder. But I also think this is such a cute way of rethinking some of your button downs and just like getting more off the shoulder crop tops by buttoning them off the shoulder and tying them. And never ever forget the power of corsets and belts. With a corset, you can make a thousand different outfits. I know it might not seem like the most practical clothing item, but it is something that when you're packing for a trip or something, and you're like, oh man, I don't know what to wear. A corset can really just like change an entire outfit and you can create new garments out of corsets and belts. So do not underestimate the power of those items. But basically this section is about like, not just seeing your like a skirt as a skirt, a dress as a dress, a shirt as a shirt, but seeing a dress as a possible skirt, as a possible top, seeing skirts as possible dresses, possible petticoats. Like you can do so many things. And if you just break out of what you think that clothing item is for. So the next section where you might need to buy a couple things or you might need to pick up a few things is gonna be about ribbons and pins. Obviously these are very inexpensive things to get. What I suggest and what I do personally is save every single ribbon that comes into your life from packaging, from bouquets, from fruit baskets, just like anytime something comes with a ribbon, no matter the color, no matter the size, just save it in like a box because I promise you, you'll be able to do something with it. Also head over to secondhand craft stores in your area. I'm sure you have them if you just look it up and you can get some ribbon. Or if you really, really don't have any secondhand craft stores, I love the online store Make and Mend. 
They have tons of different secondhand crafts. And what I love is like their boxes. It's kind of a mystery box, kind of not, but you can get like a box of like rainbow yarn. And obviously what you see in the picture isn't gonna be exactly what it is. So it's all secondhand. So you kind of just get different yarn of different colors and different weights and, and sort of helps you dictate your projects. You could also do it with ribbons. So I got a box of pink and brown ribbon and then I think another box of like rainbow ribbon or whatever. And it came with so many different styles and types that I can just add to clothes. And with some safety pins or even just tying them around things, you can completely transform outfits. It also really helps making an outfit more cohesive. So putting ribbons on your purse, on your bows, on your shoes, replacing your shoelaces with ribbons instead, just adds a little bit of extra something, a little bit more intention to an outfit that makes it look more, like you put more thought into it. If there's a ribbon in your hair that matches the one on your purse, that matches the one on your shoes, it just can tie a whole outfit together and make it feel more like a look than the just putting clothes on your body. You can also use a ribbon and a couple of pins to make kind of a fake dart in the back of your dress. If there's a dress or an item that is just a little bit too big for you, pinning on either side some ribbon and then you can use that as a corset to sort of tighten it up is an awesome way of kind of an easy alteration if you're not privy to sewing or you don't wanna go and alter this dress, it's just an easy way with a cute little ribbon detail to cinch it in a bit more. You can also use pins on skirts to make them look more ruffled, to give it more of a voluminous sort of like medieval look. So pinning them up by your thigh, pinning them in certain areas just to give a little bit more volume is another great idea. And this isn't so much ribbons and pins, but it's kind of similar. For my Taylor Swift concert, I got a bunch of butterflies from Michaels and I hot glued them to hair clips and I put them all over my hair. And that was another little like DIY thing that was like very easy, very cheap to make little custom hair clips for myself. So with ribbons and pins, you can really, especially with like the bow trend going on, you can really like make an outfit more, more coquette, more girly, just a little bit more stylish by adding some satin or lace to it. All right, so the next category is knitting and crochet. So this is gonna take a little bit of skill, but I promise you, Knitting and crocheting is not, like the simple stuff, is not that hard. You can look it up. There's so many TikToks on it. You could, I promise you, you'll be able to figure it out. Like I said, secondhand yarn is great. I love getting my yarn from Make and Mend because when I don't know what kind of project I want to do, it's so easy when I get like a box of secondhand yarn to have that sort of dictate the color schemes and everything else that I'm doing. You can also get secondhand craft books. I have a few from a thrift store, which is so fun because you can get ones that are kind of like old school and you can really see like the craft book that I have is from like 2004, I think. And there's like an iPod Nano case. <laughs> a pattern in it, which is really funny. Also, TikTok. TikTok is such a good resource to learn how to crochet and knit. Even if you're just struggling with a stitch or something, you can just go on TikTok and just look up like how to do a pearl stitch, how to do this, that, and the other. And it really is so, so helpful. I always have TikTok in hand when I'm crafting. And there's even a way to, if you thrift a sweater, if you get a, a knit, to undo the yarn and reuse that yarn. I think if you have a spinner, I don't have that, so I don't totally know how to do that, but I know there's people on TikTok that will get old pieces from thrift stores. Maybe they have holes in them. Maybe they hate the cut, but it's of a really nice wool or cashmere material. And they'll frog the entire garment and reuse that yarn, which I think is so, so cool and make it into a new garment. One thing I like about knitting and crocheting and why I would want to implore you guys to try it as well is that you can make clothing with 100% natural fibers, which nowadays is so hard to find clothing that is 100% cotton, 100% linen, 100% cashmere, 100% wool. So by making your own clothes, you can start building a wardrobe that is 100% cotton, that is 100% wool, which maybe to some people is not that big of a deal. It is to me, I hate the feeling of polyester. I mean, this is kind of a polyester thing, but I'm pretty sensitive about materials especially with knits. So being able to make sweaters for myself, make garments for myself that are of materials that I really, really like is so empowering and just really, really fun. Knitting and crocheting is also a great way if you want to get out of the habit of scrolling on your phone while watching TV called double screening it, you can like knitting and crocheting 
fills that same sort of scrolling void where your eyes and your hands are occupied, but obviously it's not as destructive and you're actually like making something, which is another bonus to knitting and crocheting your own clothes. Like there's so many resources out there to knit and crochet and it's very, very fun. It's something that I've become so passionate about and something that really brings me a lot of joy when I am even just watching TV or like having a break at work. It's so, so fun. Some simple patterns and by simple, I mean I can do it. So I promise you can do it is a boat neck sweater, skinny scarves, crochet roses, socks, a knit tank top, a crochet shrug, a little wrap for your shoulders or as a little skirt. I haven't tried these ones, but I know like tie cardigans, tube tops, halter tops are also incredibly easy to make crochet or knit like very simple projects. Just a lot of like these little cutie tie tops, these tiny little tops that you would normally get from fast fashion brands are actually very, very easy to do if you knit or crochet yourself and you can pretty much do it in a weekend, which is awesome. Thinking about buying new little tiny tops for spring break or for summer break or whatever, maybe think about knitting a couple of yours for yourself instead. Okay, so we've come to the second to last section and the last sort of category of DIYs and the most difficult slash the most offensive, which would be sewing. Now, I know that not everyone has a sewing machine and sewing is a little bit intimidating, but there are like places that do sewing workshops or craft co-ops where you could go in and like use the sewing machines and get like lessons and stuff for a pretty low cost. A lot of times they're at like local colleges or something. So I would definitely check that out. They are so many sewing machines secondhand on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, OfferUp, even at the thrift store. I got mine from Facebook Marketplace from someone that refurbishes sewing machines. I think I got mine for like 80 bucks. It's a singer. It works so well. And the guy like plugged it in and had me sew on it. That way he could like prove to me that it works and whatever, but you could honestly even get one new for like around a hundred bucks. They're not that expensive and there are free patterns around, but also Etsy is a great place to find just like simpler patterns, stuff like baby doll dresses, um, like the silky puff dress, tank tops, shift dresses. Those are incredibly simple to make via sewing and great beginner projects. So instead of going out and buying cute little summer dresses, you could make your own. Etsy has awesome patterns. You can get patterns from like the seventies and like get actual true blue, like what people were wearing back then. Again, thrifted pattern books are everywhere at bookstores and I actually like to source my fabric from thrift stores. Like well, I made a dress out of an old bed sheet and I think it's so pretty, so unique. Obviously you're taking something that wasn't gonna be used and turning it into something else. Also the great thing about sewing is that you can make easy customizations. You can make things fit well, you can hem things, you can trim them, you can add lace, you can crop things. So you could really customize your clothes with some very basic sewing skills. Even just a simple needle and thread is not that hard to learn on your own. But but I definitely recommend checking out like different sewing workshops. I promise you they're in your area. It might seem intimidating, but sewing really isn't that difficult. I mean, I'm not gonna say that I'm a great sewer, but like just learning how to use a machine isn't that difficult. Now perfecting it and making it like look good and perfect is a different story. But if you're looking for a new skill, it's so empowering to make your own clothes, whether it's knitting, crocheting, sewing, it's such an empowering thing to be like, I made this myself or I did this myself. So I definitely recommend like acquiring some of these skills, especially with spring and summer coming up. We got breaks, we got time. We can just, we can chill and learn a new little craft to help us make more sustainable clothes. And again, with learning how to sew, you get to choose your own adventure. So you get to choose the fabrics, you get to choose where you source them and stuff. So you really get to make the clothes of your dreams, not just trying to choose from things at a store, which is what I love about it. Also for finding like deep gems, like deep cuts from the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, even the 40s, you can find sewing patterns. So you're someone that loves vintage fashion, but maybe honestly, you're not a size four like everyone else ba was back then and vintage fashion seldom fits you. Getting vintage patterns and then being able to adopt, adapt them for your size is a way where you could genuinely get a vintage silhouette that actually fits you, that actually like is made for you. And 
that's also very empowering because sometimes it is hard to find clothes secondhand. So if you're a vintage lover and some often can't fit into vintage or also a lot of vintage is polyester, especially vintage from the 70s, getting patterns from your favorite eras and usually you can preview some of the like the items that are in those pattern books getting patterns from your favorite eras and then being able to buy your own cotton fabric adapt it for your size or whatever is so nice so empowering and i feel like it gives more people access to vintage if you use vintage pattern because sometimes shopping for vintage is just not accessible for everybody. $5 patterns on Etsy that are vintage is definitely more accessible. So this last section is just gonna be a quick run through of different resources that I recommend for learning these skills or just like getting more educated on them. Thrift stores are gonna be some of your best friends, especially for secondhand craft books. There's also like, if you go to secondhand bookstores or secondhand craft stores, you'll be able to find secondhand craft supplies. You'll be able to find secondhand pattern books and like idea books from that, either at a thrift store or at secondhand craft stores or at a secondhand bookstore. But any of those things you probably have somewhere in a 30 minute radius from you and you'll be able to acquire at least some basic things because when you start a new hobby I definitely I want you guys to start new hobbies but I don't want you to immediately go out and buy a bunch of new things if you don't know that you're actually gonna go do it so that's why I like things like make and mend secondhand craft stores secondhand bookstores because if I don't know that I'm gonna take off in sewing take off in uh, crocheting or knitting at least I didn't just spend a bunch of money and buy new things and take new resources I am just reusing old resources that were already existing already there and I saved a little money from doing that so definitely if you've never knitted never crocheted never sewed start secondhand that's what I did it helps honestly I feel like it helps you learn because you're not just like in the void of Michael's looking at everything you have sort of a, a more narrow look at everything. Look up uh, crafting co-ops, local classes and workshops. There was a secondhand store in my neighborhood in Providence called The Nest that does like a knitting workshop, I think every two weeks. Stuff like that, cool little like artist places in your area, secondhand stores in your area. Ask around, look around. I'm sure there's gonna be like, even just like a knitting club in your area that you can get some like help with um, if you're starting out or just like some local support. It's just easier to craft with friends and it's more fun. Like I said, TikTok is a great resource for help. Like if I'm just, how do I do this? What do I do? What does this pattern mean? What does this abbreviation mean? I can just go on TikTok really quickly and see a short little video and go back to the pattern that I was using. TikTok is such a great resource for crafting. There's so many good ideas out there. The community is so supportive and it's just like, I get so inspired seeing other people make their clothes on TikTok. And there's also pretty easy patterns. Like that's where I learned how to crochet my flowers was just a TikTok video. So definitely recommend doing that. The crochet flowers is such an easy beginner project. Etsy is an awesome place for knitting, crocheting, and sewing patterns. The website Ravelry has a ton of free patterns. I, a Garn Studio, I think garnstudio.com also has a ton of free patterns. There's also crafting YouTubers. One that I know of that's pretty popular is Jenna Phipps. She, I feel like got really, really big in 2020 for her sewing and knitting hacks that she does. She has tons of free patterns on her YouTube channel as well. And she seems like a great vibe. If you have other crafting YouTubers that you like, tag them down below let share share it with everybody else in this video i would also like to know because i basically only know of jenna phipps so absolutely love to know of your favorite crafting youtubers and if you're looking for ways to just revamp your clothes rethink your clothes restyle your clothes old ashley best dress videos are awesome again she i feel like she didn't invent or pioneer but i definitely feel like she made popular like using dresses as tops or like what she has tons of videos on like how you can transform your clothes of like 100 outfits or 27 outfits with one dress or whatever she has tons of videos on that for someone who's more contemporary and still 
posting to this day. I mentioned her last week, but that curly top who also created Sustainable Baddie, which is an online publication, is always, like she's the one that taught me the button down skirt hack. She's always showing me new ways to wear my clothes and really thinking outside of the box on how to wear my clothes. So I definitely recommend following her as well for people who are still posting. And if you guys have any other creators that you feel like either are really big into knitting, crocheting, or sewing like Jenna Phipps is, or who are really awesome at transforming their clothes like that curly top or best dress, let all of us know down below so we can all be sustainable baddies, hot girl DIYs for spring. That is the goal. I hope this video inspired you guys to not go out and buy clothes for spring and summer, but to reinvent your closet, add ribbons to a couple little things, add some flowers to a couple little things, maybe pick up your mom's old knitting needles, maybe go to a thrift store, grab, grab a crochet hook and some yarn and like start a little project. It's so fun, so rewarding. And I feel like if you truly want to create a relationship with your clothing, knowing how clothing is made will help strengthen that relationship. When you know the amount of work that goes into a hand knit sweater, when you know the amount of work that goes into sewing a dress, you do have a, a newfound appreciation for it. And I, I think that's really important to create that relationship with your clothing. I hope this video inspires you guys to strengthen that relationship with your clothing, to maybe pick up a new hobby, and mostly just to not buy first, to try to reinvent first before we buy, because that is always the theme of this channel, is that everything that you want is probably already in your closet, you just gotta rethink it. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and make sure you subscribe to my channel because I post videos every Thursday. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram because I post content there as well. And with that, have a happy, happy day. Bye.